Yes, men and women. We are here at Ibex uh, police station to see one of our counterparts, uh, Chilfia Tayali, who was arrested yesterday and detained uh, here at the police station. We had a chance to see the officer in charge, uh, who mentioned to us that uh, he's under very strict instructions that no one should see uh, Chilfia Tayali. We therefore were unable to see him uh, because we are not given access. We want to say this to the Zambian people that uh, what is happening now is a very sad uh, development in our democratic uh, dispensation. Uh, this is a government that is uh, governed uh, uh, and be, you know, based on the constitution which guarantees freedoms, uh, freedom of expression, freedom of movement among others. When you look at the statements that uh, were made by President Haka in the Hichilema in opposition then, and what is happening now, this is yet another failed promise. He promised to improve and enhance people's freedoms, uh, freedom of expression. When you hear them speak now, they say uh, Zambia is better now than it was yesterday. So the case of Tayali here, uh, behind bars, away from his family, uh, is that what they're telling us, that Zambia is now better? Uh, things that they complained about, things that are comp they complained about previously, are nowhere close to what they're doing now. So we're indeed very saddened that uh, this is the Zambia that we live in now. If Tayali uh, uh, made a political statement, a political statement should only be traversed by yet another political statement. We know that uh, the opposition, in opposition, the UPND had a very vibrant media team when they were making promises. What has happened to that vibrant team? That vibrant team is unable uh, to speak now because they've realized that most of the things they said were not true. They've realized that most of the promises that they made uh, cannot be actualized. So we want to uh, uh, call upon the leadership of the UPND, including the president himself, that um, he should um, live by his undertaking, his promise to govern this country using the rule of law. And governing this country using and the rule of law and constitutionalism entails that uh, citizens should be free uh, you know, to associate. Citizens should be free to express themselves. If Zambians are going through hardships as they are now, and one Chilufi Atayali takes it upon himself to complain and indeed express himself on these hardships. He does not commit an offense because what he's saying is just true. He, what he's saying is speaking for the millions of people out, out there. So uh, a word of uh, caution and guidance to the UPND. You will not govern with, a high on, with an iron fist. It will not work. Mm. The Zambians have tested freedom. The Zambians know what it is to be free. And the Zambians indeed know what a good life is. They know what uh, a high standard of living is. If you increase fuel, if you increase millimil and increase fertilizer, the Zambians are going to complain. And they've got that right to complain, especially against the promises that uh, you made. You will go all about and sing about free education. The reality on the ground is that uh, those classrooms are full. You know, teachers are even failing to interact with their, with their uh, uh, students. They are failing to interact with their learners. So even as you sing and celebrate uh, uh, free education, uh, get on the ground and understand the dynamics out, uh, out there. You know, you will not silence people because you released CDF meant for the first quarter and you release it in the second quarter and you expect no one to speak but sing praises for you. So uh, this is failure of governance by the uh, UPND and we want to call upon them uh, to sober up, uh, begin to readjust and understand what is involved in governance. You have to be tolerant. We've said this a uh, time and again that uh, uh, to govern, you've got to have a very big chest. To govern, you have to have a thick skin. You should not be one that uh, begins to run just at the sound of um, a single uh, item of criticism. When citizens hold dissenting views, use that as feedback so that you know where to put your effort, you know where to deploy, and not using that now to use an iron fist and using the police 
uh, to oppress those that may want to uh, express themselves. As politicians, uh, learn to speak to your people. Learn to uh, respond uh, to your people. I think that uh, using state machinery to oppress uh, political opponents is not something that we are going to sit and, and watch. Uh, speaking on behalf of uh, my party, the Patriotic Front Party, in my capacity as member of Central Committee, and indeed uh, the leader of opposition in Parliament, I want to express my uttermost disappointment uh, with this particular arrest because uh, it's very clear where this direction is going, where this government is uh, is taking us. Uh, sooner than later, you know, we may have um, uh, a government uh, full of dictatorial tendencies. It's something that we do not expect. This is something we did away with in 1991 and we want to call upon the Zambians to condemn Tayali's uh, arrest. Uh, you know, with uh, the contempt that it deserves. Maybe you can take advantage of uh, this uh, interview. Uh, what has the Russia situation to do with our uh, oil? With our well, fuel increase? Well, first of all, uh, whether or not the Russia situation has an impact on our situation for, for oil, my position is that it should have been anticipated. It was either a war, it could have been COVID, disruptions or increases in oil prices is something that we should expect. I have served before as the chairman for the Energy Regulation Board. I understand the dynamics within that sector. So uh, to pretend that you didn't expect there to be increases, you, you will be fooling the Zambian people. The question is, uh, the oil prices have gone up. What is it that a responsible government will do to cushion the impact on its citizens? That's the only question. I think that uh, uh, governments in the world over, even in this region, that have introduced subsidies have done so because they have put the welfare of the citizens in the center. Now, to want to be rigid and say, look, we removed subsidies because the IMF told us to remove them and we can't go back there, uh, then you, you are subordinating your own citizens to the IMF. You know, the, the IMF, yes, we need, we, we need the assistance, but uh, they should not be the ones to uh, dictate uh, everything that we have to do, even in the interest of uh, 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 the welfare of our citizens. So for us to answer your question, it does not matter what impact the war in Ukraine and, China and uh, Russia has. What matters to us is what is government going to do to cushion the impact uh, on its citizens. We don't want to be told that the president had to forego uh, driving a limousine uh, but increase fuel. <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. I would rather he drives the limousine, the limousine, accepts the limousine for his safety because we want him, you know, to be safe and reduce the price of fuel. Yeah, so let's not trivialize governance and bring in small things. No, he has forgone his pay for eight months. Who wants to hear that? Who wants to hear that? What, what impact has that got on, on the poor people? If at all it was, it was significant, why didn't it go to cushion the price of fuel? So let's talk about serious things. Let's not begin to bring in small things as if it's a Mickey Mouse arrangement that we are running. We are running government, and to be able to run government, you have to be serious. So we, we, we don't want to, 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 to start listening to those uh, uh, you know, uh, childish statements being made. You know, he has forgotten his salary for eight months. No, he didn't accept the limousine. What is here now is the cost of living for the Zambian people. And the cost of living for the Zambian people is unbearable. The undertaking or the promise that was made by the UPND, they made a promise to improve the living standards of the Zambian people. And that was made with full awareness of our debt situation. It was made with full awareness of all our challenges. So the assignment that President Akainde Hichilema took up was with the full awareness of what the environment was. So you can't come in government today and say, no, we're prioritizing uh, uh, you know, debt dismantling. Why didn't you tell us from the beginning to say, when we take over government, we'll first of all dismantle debt for the first five years, and you only begin to see good life thereafter? Zambians should not forget that when the UPND was making these promises, they were attaching timelines. There were times when they would say, I take over at 10 hours, by 14 hours exchange rates will we, 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 we change. Those are the benchmarks. You, you know, don't let that slip through. That's what he said. Now, seven months later, he was giving us hours. Seven months later, the exchange rates have not improved. And somebody must come to you and say, uh, give them time. <laughs> really? Uh, give them time? The, pre the, the Minister of Finance is telling us, we will employ 30,000 teachers by January. And this is April, and you want them to be given time. We will employ 11,000 workers by January, and you want them to be given time. Yeah, so 
I, I think that uh, we, 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 we need our friends in government to be serious, uh, to be able to govern uh, uh, this country and just deliver on the promises that they, that they made. It will not help. How many citizens are they going to arrest? Because every other citizen out there is complaining about the hardship. So how many are they going to arrest? Tayali is just one of those. He was speaking on behalf of others. Even as we speak now, many others out there are complaining about the same things. So I thought it was very important that, uh, first of all, we highlight uh, the very fact that the arrest of Tayali is uh, necessary. He should be condemned, uh, you know, uh, with, with, with the, with the, with the uh, contempt that he deserves. We are in this democracy where people must express themselves. If Tayali takes it upon himself to express himself about what is going wrong, he should not end him a, a, a room in custody in a police station as it is. I thank you. Well, of course, you, 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 it's, it's undisputed. When you hear our colleagues go out there and say, this government did nothing, it's, it's laughable. Because we are here at this police station, mm. you know. Uh, they were able to employ 30,000, or they are attempting to employ 30,000 uh, uh, teachers because we put up infrastructure. Mm. They are attempting to employ 11,000 employees because we put up infrastructure. So if uh, uh, all this will amount to nothing, then we are really interested to see what they will do in these five years. If all this infrastructure that we put up for the police, if all that infrastructure that we put up in terms of road infrastructure, in terms of health infrastructure, education infrastructure, amounts to nothing according to our friends. The clock is ticking. It's seven months later. We are four years down the line. We want to see at the end of 2026 uh, what they would have done compared to what we did. Thank you.